In mid-August 2017, my wife Jeannie and I set up camp along the Metolius River in Central Oregon to prepare for the solar eclipse. We were in the path of totality, and we were also in the middle of a large and active osprey colony. This video is about the habitat and behavior of the osprey and the solar eclipse at an open clearing that I called Osprey Acre. The Metolius River pops out of the ground at 50,000 gallons per minute and rolls wildly for 29 miles before ending in Lake Billy Chinook. The water is a refreshing 48 degrees. The river is in a mixed forest dominated by ponderosa pines. Just up the hill from the campground at Osprey Acre, a forest fire has created a clearing with many tall dead ponderosa pines still standing. With their long wings, osprey are strong flyers in open areas but aren't maneuverable in tight spaces, so they need tall trees near clearings like this one to build their nests. Despite the dead trees, there's life and beauty to be found here. These ospreys spend their winters along the coast of Mexico and return to the same nesting ground each year, usually to the same nest.
Males have a completely white breast, while females have a necklace of brown speckles and are slightly larger. The soft peeps you hear are their two juveniles begging for food from the nearby nest. Nests are the center of activity for osprey at this time of year. Because they are prodigious builders and because nest sites are critical for successful propagation, the osprey guard their homes vigorously. The guard calls repeated whistle like a tea kettle taken abruptly off a stove. It's a very common sound at Osprey Acre. The mother in this nest, the one with the yellower eyes, is making the guard call. On a nearby roost, her guard call turns to an alarm call when another osprey approaches. Osprey do not clean their nests. Fortunately, juveniles learn which way to point. Osprey are excellent fishers, successful on about one out of four dives. After eating, they clean their bills on a limb. The clutch size is one to four eggs, typically three, but the survival probability of a third and any subsequent chick to hatch is low. The juveniles fledge within 50 to 60 days of hatching. At Osprey Acre, some of the juveniles were already flying, and some, like this brother and sister, haven't yet made the leap. I wondered what the Osprey would do during the solar eclipse. Since it's such a rare event, there isn't a whole lot of research into it. One would expect animals to be confused by the abruptly darkened sky and the temperature drop. How they express their confusion is a guess. Veteran eclipse chasers say they've seen some animals get noticeably distressed while others go silent. Because the osprey at Osprey Acre were so vocal and nervy, I predicted that they would become noisily agitated when totality arrived. The waning moon led to excellent stargazing and a heightened anticipation for the coming eclipse. Family and friends joined us. Finally, eclipse day arrived. Everything was normal on eclipse morning. And then the show began, and wow, what a show. Okay, so you wanna tell me how you like the Eclipse? I liked the eclipse. It was awesome. It was better than I imagined. Uh, 
best part, there were a couple of best parts. One was how it cooled down. Even though the sun was out, you couldn't even tell there was an eclipse. It got cooler and cooler. And then when it happened, it was really fast, beautiful. T two minutes went by like 20 seconds. set at least 10 minutes before totality, um, and we just watched the landscape grow darker and darker and darker, um, which was one of the most amazing things. Throughout most of the hour-long partial phase before totality, neither the lighting nor the osprey behavior was noticeably different. circle in the middle of the sky. It was unbelievable. I've been waiting 40 odd years since the last eclipse, the last near total eclipse that I was in, to see this and it did not disappoint me. darkness fell essentially, although it wasn't totally dark, but just the quality of the light was incredible to me and beautiful. And then and then of course looking at the looking at the sun without glasses and the corona and those prominences coming off. It's, it's unbelievable. Almost unspeakable, you know. Almost unspeakable. Yeah. city or something. It was really cool to be out here and see the texture and, and colors of the grass and trees change. Um, I didn't end up noticing the birds. I'm curious if the birds changed, but... The birds shut up completely. Shut up. It was so noticeable. Yeah. I mean, I, when I listened, I didn't hear anything, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure if it was mm -hmm. for the whole time or just that moment I have to be particularly paying attention. We heard a few calls during the diamond ring phase of the eclipse and in the early stage of totality. Then Osprey Acre went uncharacteristically silent except for the distant roar of the Metolius.
After totality ended, the familiar guard calls resumed. My prediction of the Osprey's behavior during the eclipse turned out to be wrong. I'll first note my own unexpected reaction. I hadn't anticipated how confounding the different lighting would be during totality. If you can imagine going your whole life without seeing a sunset and then one day seeing one, it was kind of like that. I'm sure the Osprey didn't confuse the darkness for a weather change or a sunset. It was too different. It had to be a totally new and foreign experience for them. Probably they were asking themselves in their way, is this some kind of a threat? If so, they might have used their alarm call, but that's reserved for threats from eagles and other osprey. Apparently, in the face of a mysterious potential threat, they reacted by simply laying low. As for us humans, we knew what was going to happen. Even so, we couldn't help but react emotionally to such a grand scale oddity. Oh yeah, look. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. 